we come together this high noon in order to thank the Lord for Superwoman Rina. Rina was superwoman in a very real sense and uh, a multi-hyphenated person. She was a daughter, a wife, a varsitarian, one of the media girls of Cardinal Sin, one of the angels of Felix Bautista, writer, journalist, feminist, activista, all of that put together, all of that is superwoman Rina David. But at the end of it all, the hyphen started to drop, one by one. The hyphens were dropped one by one, from the inquirer, to social activism, to feminism. And at the end of it all, there was only one hyphen for Rina David, child of God. And that is what we celebrate this afternoon. Rina, super child of God, which she received on the day she was baptized, which she sustained by her life of prayer as a wife, as a mother, as a lola, as a friend, which she sustained by her faithfulness to the church and the teachings of the church. So, Rina, the child of God, has returned to the Father's house, and rightly so, because she does not belong to us. She belongs to God. In, their last, in the last years of Rina, we know that she suffered so much because sickness touched her body. And not only did sickness touch virus, bacteria, ailments stayed in her body. We all know her health condition in the past months. But despite all these maladies, despite all these pains and aches that possessed the body of Rina, at the end of it all, all the needles had to give up, all the medicines had to give up, because at the end of it all, the body of Rina was only and always temple of God. If we honor the house of Rizal or Aguinaldo because national heroes live there, we honor the house of Rina because God dwelt in this body. She was truly God's temple. And not only was she a child of God, she allowed the Lord to dwell in her soul, she allowed the Lord to live in her heart. And for this, we are grateful. Because through the 68 years that Rina lived here on earth, we knew that we were seeing the face of God when we saw her. We knew that we were reading the Word of God when we read her. We knew that we, are, we were seeing the smile of God in her smile. We knew that we were being loved by God by the way Rina loved all of us. And uh, at the end of it all, Rina is not just Jimenez David. And let me explain why. In the life of another feminist in the church, Santa Teresa de Avila, when she was being persecuted by some bishops and cardinals, for her reform movement in the church, in depression, in frustration, in disappointment, in cynicism and almost skepticism and discouragement, Teresa was about to give up. One morning, when she came down from the convent, she saw a little boy, around 12 years old, playing inside the cloister. She was surprised because it was a sister's convent and they had no children. So, with fondness, Sister Teresa said to the boy, Good morning. 
My name is Teresa de Jesus. What is your name? And the boy said, Good morning. I am Jesus de Teresa. The Lord Jesus appeared to Sister Teresa in order to assure her, You have chosen to belong to me. Now I want to assure you, I belong to you. Sorina is no longer Jimenez. Rina is no longer David. Rina is no longer the wife and daughter. Rina is no longer the Lola and sister. Rina is only the Jesus. He is now Rina of Jesus forever. She will now stop counting her age. She will no longer be affected by the calendar years. She will no longer be affected by the passing of days and months because she has entered into a world that is ageless because Rina is with Jesus and Jesus is with Rina. We thank the Lord for a superwoman like her. At the end of it all, a child of God. At the end of it all, temple of God. At the end of it all, belonging to Jesus and Jesus belonging to her. Rina, thank you for loving us. Thank you for showing us the dignity of being a Christian, of being a woman, of being a wife, of being a mother. Rest in the Lord. Rest in Jesus, to whom you really belong.